Hi, I'm Miley Nakins. I'm a real estate advisor with Angle & Volkers here in Victoria on beautiful Vancouver Island. And today we have Russ Cass with us and we've been talking to him about depreciation reports and all things strata. Today Russ is going to take a look at this building and give us some insight so you can get an idea of what it is that Russ as his uh, specialty in, in home inspection is all about. So Russ, take it away. All right. So. <laughs> Well, the building, uh, when we're looking at it, we're looking at the, uh, the major components. So, for example, the windows, uh, the stucco itself, uh, what is the condition like? And this is an observation, is are we seeing any kind of bulging in the stucco? Is it letting go of the actual wiring? Uh, which, of course, we spoke in the last session about repairs and maintenance. That can all be repaired. Uh, you don't have to take it all off and start again. And that's important to know because if you do take it off, you just cross the line in building code. Oh. Now you have a whole new set of requirements that are coming at you. Uh, rain screen potentially. Uh, costs have begun to escalate significantly. So Go ahead, scare me. Yeah, so just <laughs> like your car, and we all know this, you have a repair and maintenance schedule. They tell you when to fix it, they tell you when to repair it, and you can do that almost forever. <laughs> as long as you keep looking after it. But imagine if you had a flat tire and you went, ah, that's it, done, I'm going to replace this car. Look at the cost difference. Right. It's kind of the same with your building. Good. That's so a, it's a great analogy. Easy. A yeah. great analogy. So making sure that you're looking after the building. And the regulation in Part 6.2, if you read it carefully, <laughs> says the words repair and maintain six times. It only says replace twice. The regulator, the government people are trying to tell you to do just what you do with your car. Right. We don't right. always do it. Costs us lots of money. So what can you tell us in a, in a sort of a quick overview uh, about this side of this building? Like, what's the first thing that you notice? So straight away I can see you've had a couple of stucco repairs. I can see uh, further up the building a couple of little indentations. There's been some repairs. I can see you've had your windows upgraded. Uh, which is nice to see and also all of your window flashings are still there. Uh, often I find when the windows are installed if they're a renovator type with a big flange that gets cut off which will make later problems occur. But you seem to be in pretty good condition. I'm suspecting you've had some perhaps fire alarm upgrades done because I see trunking going on the outside of the building. Not yes. sure what that is, but I would that would create the desire for me to look further and see what's going on inside. Cool. So uh, decks, I can see you've got original railings uh, and just like we spoke about earlier, as long as you leave them like that, you are always in the code of the day of when this building was approved. Right. If you decided to replace them with something else, we just stepped across the line in code again. So, so what does that mean when we, you know, so say we decided to replace all of these balconies. What does that mean in stepping across the code? Well, code requirements for railings are a lot different to what they were when this building was built. Right. So does that mean we have to stick to the new code or the old code? Well, as soon as you take them all off, you've stepped into the new code. Okay. Uh, and then you need to meet all of those requirements. Now, uh, that means lateral loads, the pressure on the railings. Right. That's an engineer specialty. Right. So that's all got to be uh, designed to meet that code requirement. Right. So it's in the best interest of this building then to maintain and repair balconies as is. That's the mantra. Got it. Uh, we're going to start slogans down at Parliament buildings. <laughs> repair and maintain. Repair and maintain. I love I'm that. I'm going to get the loud hailer. And it's going to be wonderful. Come on down. <laughs> meet us there on Sunday. <laughs> Okay, sign me up. I'll do that. <laughs> Jokes aside, it really is. Repair and maintain is the mantra. Uh, a building needs to look after itself. It needs to always be in good condition. And it needs to be done cost effectively. Key point, cost effectively. Yep. Because one of the big concerns right now is the amount of strata fees, how much they're going up. Now, some of that, of course, is uh, in relationship to the insurance uh, premiums that are also going up. And and how do you see that that is affecting the, the, the strata buildings and the strata corporations? Well, it, it's interesting because they do affect them. I mean, that all comes out of the operational budget, of course, but it is part of the cost. Right, because one of the big concerns is that strata 
data fees are going up. I know that part of that is also a result of some of the um, insurance policies and premiums that have come up. Now, how do you see that as it has affected uh, the strata corporations? Well, certainly the, the insurance, which is part of the operational budget, it, it has an impact. Uh, if any costs go up, uh, it's going to have an impact. So it, we come back to repairs and maintenance. What, what the insurer wants to see is that you are applying a risk management program to your building, which means you're repairing it, you're fixing it, you're trying to limit uh, disasters from occurring. And repairs and maintenance is the way to do that. Sometimes it's new technologies, which may be moisture sensors, huh. uh, maybe automatic shuttle valves. All of these things, while in themselves are expensive, they're inexpensive in the big picture. I think that's the key thing, is inexpensive in the big picture. Now, is part of your mandate um, in inspecting strata buildings also to take a look how they, the, at their insurance premiums and make sure that they're covered? Is that in your... In your uh, wheelhouse, so to speak? It, well, we, we look at it yep. uh, because it gives us an inclination of what the strata may have done historically. Right. So when we're seeing, for example, flood damage, uh, deductibles at $50,000, we know that the likelihood is, because that's an abnormally high amount, is that the buildings likely had a number of leaks, which have resulted in insurance claims. Got it. If we're seeing one of $10,000, we know that, wow, you guys are being pretty good. <laughs> So, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like a building that's been pretty good. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Russ, thank you so much for taking a look at the back of this building. We have more to talk to Russ about, but stay tuned for that, okay? And thanks for joining us this morning. I'm Eileen Akins with Russ Cass, and we will see you soon.